Axel Schultz is on his way. The crowd yet, not yet having caught sight of Axel Schultz. They'll see him in a second here as he comes outside. And this place will go wild. His third consecutive heavyweight title shot. We are approaching 11 o'clock at night here in Germany. They've waited all day for this. Dan, it's always tough to predict what the pressure of a crowd like this will be on Axel Schultz. Some people respond by being uplifted by it. Some people just get totally suffocated by the pressure of this much support, not just from the people here in Dortmund, from all over Germany. They feel he was robbed in his last two tries for the title unjustly. They have a, a, a lot of justification in that opinion, and, and they really are rooting with all their hearts for him to win this title. Here comes the 27-year-old German. Born in East Germany, Dan, if there had not been the unification of the countries, he would still be fighting for the East German national team as a heavyweight and not earning all of the money that he has earned as a professional. Born in a little town called Frankfurt Oder, not to be confused with the Frankfurt Germany the most of us think live. Now, time permitting, at the conclusion of the fight, we'll took a, take a look at how our online users scored the fight. Now, that's America Online, the keyword ABC Sports. Let's go back to ring announcer Michael Buffer. Sanctioned by the BDB and the IBF. BDB President Dr. Al Lewis Toiba. IBF President Robert W. Lee, European Commissioner at Ringside, Benedetto Montella, IBF Supervisor at Ringside, Walter R. Stone, Coordinator for the event, Marcel Nars. The three judges scoring this contest on a 10-point must system are Walter Cavalieri, John Stewart, and Dave Paris. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, your referee, Bill Connors. And yet, meine Damen und Herren, Aus Dortmund, Deutschland. Let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, wearing black and yellow, weighing in at 101 kilograms. That's 222 and three quarter pounds. His professional record, 21 victories, two defeats, one draw and one no decision, with 10 knockouts to his credit. Meine Damen und Herren, in die blauen Ecke, aus Frankfurt oder Deutschland, here is Axel Schuh! And across the ring in the red corner, Wearing green and weighing in at 100.8 kilos. That's 222 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 36 victories. Only one defeat with 30 KOs and three world championships. Ladies and gentlemen, from Boca Raton, Florida, USA, introducing the former heavyweight champion of the world, Michael Well, while Michael Buffer catches his breath, let's go ahead and check the tail of the tape, and you'll find out that these are two fighters that are mirror images of each other, virtually the same size, more one year older than Schultz, the weight within half a pound, 6'2 to 6'3, the reach almost identical, more, though, the southpaw fighter. The referee is Bill Connors. And the IBF rules will be in effect for this fight as referee Connors gives the fighters their final instructions. The 10-point must system is in effect. No three knockdown rule or standing eight count. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round and only the referee Bill Connors can stop the fight.
Well, two points to make, Dan. Uh, the tell of the tape, Michael Moore is eight pounds heavier than the 214 he weighed in that superb performance against the Vander Holyfield. And the IBF has appointed an American referee and one American judge, the other two judges from England and Italy. If the German fans are right, and I think they are, in their feeling that there has been terrible injustice done to Axel Schultz and the decisions he's had in the past, it's hard to believe that they couldn't get uh, neutral judges for this fight as it begins with round one. The fight is underway. Michael Moore in the green trunks. Axel Schultz wearing the black with the yellow and the red trim. And again, anytime you see a southpaw fighter, as is Moore finding a conventional right-hander, always keep an eye on the lead feet because they will have a tendency to come in contact all evening long, one stepping on the foot of the other. And as we pointed out before, when we've done Michael Moore's fights, his feet are size 15, so they have a tendency to get tangled more than... A more than normal. That does not make him a bad guy, Alice. <laughs> I want you to know that. He does not have the only 15s in attendance here tonight. Both these men best when they put punches together. There are very few fighters who aren't better when they put punches together. But sometimes they are reluctant to do so. Sometimes they just pose a lot like they're doing now and pick with a single punch at a time. It will be interesting to see another good right uppercut by Michael Moore. It will be interesting to see who initiates the action and who is able to get punches together the best. Well, I'd have to think that action will be slow to come in the first round. As you can see, neither one of these fighters has worked up a sweat. An extensive pre-fight list of introductions. And again, a reminder, it is very cool here this evening. The I think, temperature in the low 50s. I think this fight started about 12 minutes late, Dan. With all of those festivities they had, they really were way, way off schedule. And I, you could sense when you saw the shots in the locker room of Michael Moore pacing that he was not happy about that. You warm up a certain way, and then you don't get to go out to the ring, and that's tough. We want to remind our ABC stations that we'll be taking a station break at the conclusion of this round, round number one. Less movement by uh, Axel Schultz than I would have expected. I would have expected Axel to be moving away out of respect for Michael Moore's power, but he has not done that yet. No, he's staying right in Michael Moore's power range. I don't know if you can see on the screens at home, but it is so cold in there that you can see the fighter's breath. And, of course, Axel Schultz maybe thinks that power is not a problem for him. He's never been knocked down. Maybe he doesn't think Michael Moore has enough in him to knock him down. And he took the best that George Foreman had to offer. Uh, a George Foreman who was able to knock out Michael Moore with one punch. Some right hand it was, too. A couple of good digging right hands by Michael Moore. Axel Schultz is less mobile than, than we've been accustomed to seeing him in his previous fights. To see him trapped on the ropes there and taking punches like that is unusual for him. Again, nothing coming back from Schultz. Oh, a good but... uppercut by Moore there, Alex. We'll be back with more of the IBF Heavyweight Championship presented by Budweiser after this word from our ABC stations as we come to the end of the first round. Meet your West Western Germany. This fight was originally scheduled for Berlin, but the promoters moved it over to the other side of the country to take advantage of a bigger venue. Anticipating this big crowd, and they've, they've got it here tonight. So the good right-hand lead, the first punch of the round by Axel Schultz. That's the punch you're supposed to use against the southpaw. I wonder how much Axel is confused right now by the southpaw stance. He says he's fought a couple of southpaws, says he knows how to fight them. Had an amateur career in which he faced some, but it can be something. I mean, Evander Holyfield admitted it, it really threw him for a loop when he fought Michael Moore. A couple of hooks, a left and a right. Schultz that time did a nice job backing away. All three of those punches by Moore fell short. Interesting to watch for how much that right jab of my, there it is, doubles with the jab. Interesting to see how much he uses it. Well, it's certainly a much quicker jab than Schultz's. And with a lot more behind it. There it is again. Heavy, heavy right hand because Michael Moore is one of those rarest of boxers. Uh, you spoke about it in the profile, Dan. A natural right-hander who's turned around as a southpaw. His right hand is his power hand. Yeah, and Schultz is kind of surprising, Alex. He, he looks like a middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears. Axel Schultz, and yet he really does not throw bombs. Not a heavy puncher. Both men you see there hold their hands up well. So 
if you're scoring this fight, make sure you discount punches that land on the gloves. It's not just throwing a punch. It's not just making contact. If, the, if it hits the gloves, it is not a scoring blow. That is kind of a chopping, almost a rabbit punch sometimes thrown by Axel Schultz, doing absolutely no damage at all, kind of looping around from the outside and cuffing more. There's another inside uppercut thrown by Moore. He's landed with those. Yeah, He'll actually throw a right. He'll throw a right to the body and then follow it with an uppercut. It's a nice combination, Alex. Another uppercut by Moore. And, that, and that's the kind of punch that, that can do tremendous damage, that right uppercut, any uppercut like that. And Michael Moore throws it very well. And there are cuffing punches. Didn't seem to be hard punches by Axel Schultz, but Michael Moore did not react well to them. Stumbled a little bit, moving away. Inside 20 seconds here in round number two. And the steam coming off the fighters' bodies now. There might be steam coming off my body. It's awfully cool here tonight. Hard to imagine, it's the 22nd of June. The end of the second. Fighters meet in the middle for the beginning of the third round. Axel Schultz gets busy with the jab. In between rounds, Teddy Atlas told Michael Moore, he's giving you the body, and I want your work here. Michael threw a right hand to the body. It's a terrific punch. I uh, guess the guy is so content, and I left to the body. But he said okay. he wanted you to follow it up by moving to the right. Something he didn't do in the Foreman fight, and it cost him dear, dearly, Alex, yeah, as you know. Yeah, he moved to George's right hand. Uh, one of those punches was a solid punch to the head by Axel Schultz in that flurry. It was a right hand. There's another good right hand by Schultz. I think that Michael picked that one off with his gloves, Dan. Axel in Schultz round, moving backwards. Yes, that's right, Dan. Uh, Axel backpedaling a little bit more in this round. That's the kind of movement I expected to see from him in round one. It may be that he's gotten warmed up. It may be that he's become intimidated by the power of Michael Moore. There was a good left hand by Michael Moore and a good body work inside by Schultz. Which of these two men can hurt the other man? Which of these two men can land the punch that gets the respect to take the other man out of their battle plan? Moore's got the better punch. Schultz probably has the better chin. Michael Moore has been on the canvas five times during his career. Everett Martin has put him down. Cooper put him down a couple times. Of course, Foreman put him down for good. Right, he fought back and won all the early fights. There was a good right down the pipe by Schultz. And both fighters starting to break a sweat, starting to get a sheen. And they're both working hard. There has, has not been as much posing as I might have expected, Dan. Neither one of there these two, saw, neither might, one of these two born a heavyweight, Alex. They both fought at the lighter weights, worked their way up, so they're they're used to being a little more active. Well, Michael Moore moved up like no one else, I think, in boxing <laughs> history has ever moved up in weight. Uh, he put on uh, 38 pounds in four months. He skipped the cruiserweight division. 38 pounds in four months and 56 pounds in 11 months. If there is one punch to track at this point in time, it would be the right uppercut by Michael Moore. He landed again in that last exchange when Schultz was up against the ropes. And that jab, too. That, he just landed three of them. He slapped with that one. But that's a point-scoring jab, and it's a jab that will, you see a little bit of cut on the left side of Axel Schultz's nose, some kind of abrasion. But the jab of Michael Moore coming from the opposite side that Axel Schultz is used to it is something that can knock you right off, uh, off balance and out of your game plan. A good flurry by Schultz brings us to the close of the third round. Final fight is scheduled for 12 rounds. This is the beginning of the fourth. You wouldn't think that stamina would be a great problem here tonight because of the weather. It depends upon how fast the, the pace that both men uh, set. Each man likes to dictate the pace. Each man likes to fight when he wants. Oh, oh a good right Michael hand Moore by Schultz. In. And Michael, a good right hand by Schultz. And Michael Moore responded. He didn't seem to be bothered by it at all. Best punch of the fight by Schultz. Again, and Moore came right back. Again, though, it was it was Moore moving to his left into that right hand of Schultz. 
We talked to Michael. Most southpaws, most people who leave with a right jab would follow, go in the direction of the jab, would move to their right. But you see Michael Moore is very comfortable moving to his left. And sometimes that moves him right into the range of the opponent's right hand, as it did against George Foreman. Both fighters in close, only more through punches. Oh, a good series of jabs caught Schultz on the face. Clearly Moore is winning the battle of the jabs. A combination by Schultz, but they hit mostly on the shoulders. And the right hand lead by Schultz. Michael Moore holds his hands up well, but sometimes he just doesn't move his head, and you can put a right hand down the pipe. Schultz backing into a corner. Moore dug a right hand to the body. That is a debilitating punch. Certainly here in the fourth, Michael Moore much busier. Not as much coming back from Axel Schultz. Not as busy, not as comfortable, not as much in his rhythm as he was in the last round. Schultz loaded up with a right hand that time, but it sailed over the top. The more jab backing Schultz up against the ropes, and he follows with the left. He missed with the uppercut and came back with the le left and scored with that. Already abrasions on Axel Schultz's face, mainly, I would guess, from the tattoo of jabs. Alex, from this vantage point, the, the advantage in speed certainly very much in Michael Moore's favor. That landed on gloves. Oh, a nice oh. double jab by Moore, but Schultz came right back. And another right hand by Schultz. The crowd into it here as we come to the close of round number four. Bruce looks like Hamburger. Tony Tucker knows him too. Got a jab like a jackhammer. No one knows him. That's because no one wants to. Bruce Seldon, Mike Tyson, Liberation, Champion versus Champion, Saturday, July 13th, live on pay-per-view from the MGM Grand. Call your cable or satellite company. Heavyweight Championship of the World here on ABC's Wide World of Sports, presented by Budweiser. Glad you're with us. Dan Deardorff, Alex Swallow at ringside here in Dortmund, Germany. Michael Moore in the green shorts. Axel Schultz wearing the black with the red and the yellow. Actually, the red is his belt. The yellow is the <laughs> trim of his trunks. Wearing them rather low. Good job there by Michael Moore doing what Teddy Atlas told him in the corner. Work that body. He's giving you the body. Wear him down with it. It looks right now, Dan, that this is going to be a war of attrition. That Axel has a good enough chin to stand up to Michael's power and that whoever is in better condition is going to come out winning this fight. Michael Moore has been here in Germany for two weeks trying to get used to having to fight this late at night. And there you see Axel yeah. Schultz really for the first time forcing a clinch, grabbing and holding on. He looked tired along the ropes there for a minute. He's been gnawing on that jab of Michael Moore's with some regularity. We want to remind our ABC stations that we'll be taking a station break at the conclusion of this round. Oh, oh, a low blow, blow by yeah. Axel Schultz. What's it? <laughs> he came right back. Oh. <laughs> he came, and Michael knew it. Turn about his fair play. Sure, Axel was in the amateurs, but he's learned the game of the pros yes. quickly. Very quiet round, and quietest round so far here in the fifth, Dan. This is the time for either man to not accept this slow round, to step it up. The, each of these guys wants to take a rest. There's That's a, the time to come on and not let him rest. There was a good right hand by Schultz to the chest of Moore that got the crowd excited. Moore, though, responded with a good uppercut. And this and is right here, Michael Moore, Axel yeah. Schultz holding on. Axel Schultz right now a tired fighter. He clinched after about five consecutive Moore punches. 
that, that left, he just That's tried to throw there. It was there, the feet got tangled that time and actually got stood up with a right hand. The, the word that comes to my mind with that left, Alex, is amateurish. It's, yeah. it's not much. It's kind of a looping, cuffing blow. No, for as much of an ox as Axel looks, it, he is not a big puncher. Does not have the snap in his punches. If Michael Moore could 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 step it up right now, I think he could be, do some significant damage. We'll be back with more of the IBF Heavyweight Championship presented by Budweiser after this word from our ABC stations. This is Jack. The bell just a couple of seconds ago, and Axel Schultz came warily out of his corner. A eh? A real respect, I think, beginning to dawn on his face for the punching ability and the combination work of Michael Moore. Pulling with the jab there, Michael, not putting anything on it. There he had something on the one-two. Schultz keeping his, his gloves, at least for the first 20 seconds of the round, a little bit higher on the advice of his corner to try to deflect that jab. Moore working inside, and then back comes the uppercut. Got a feeling, Alex, that before this is over, he's he's really going to land with one of those. Ooh. Ooh, a good right-hand lead by Moore. And you just see the yeah. life sap out, the energy yeah. sap out of Axel. He's just not used to getting hit with a piston-like jab from that side, from the southpaw stance. Michael pulling there. You just hate to see him lay a punch out there like that. He takes the danger of getting clipped by one like he just did. Coming up on the halfway mark of the sixth round, Michael Moore, Axel Schultz. Oh, a good combination by Schultz, but boy, did Moore respond with a couple of very crisp punches at landed. And for the first time, I can truly say yeah. that he was a little bit stunned. Axel Schultz on the left with that right hand at the end of the combination. And that's the Michael Moore you like to see, the one who responds with fire, under fire. Well, Axel Schultz, after throwing the punch, does not recoil back into that defensive position as quickly as he should. Moore taking advantage. Solid pace for a heavyweight fight, Dan. There, good job by Michael on the inside and a good right to the body to end the exchange. Not an exchange, to end the combination. And you're right, Alex, this is a very active heavyweight fight. Three punches thrown by Schultz. Axel wants some time of off here. Axel wants time off and Michael should not see. He grabbed there, went to the ropes and then he grabbed. He's looking for a little rest and this is when Michael should sit on him. Just sit on him with punches, with that jab, uppercut, body punches. There, gutty two-punch combination by Axel and a right hand. All Michael Moore here in the sixth. He'll head to his corner firmly in command. Schultz. Get the second half of this fight started. If it goes a distance, it's scheduled for 12. Combination by Axel Schultz misses. And a very deliberate, a very stalking Michael Moore is the aggressor, Axel Schultz, fighting, moving backwards. He's the aggressor. He is coming in forward. Until that moment, he hadn't let his hands go, Dan. Let me just say at the halfway point, if this fight goes the distance, I've given rounds one, two, four, five, and six to Michael Moore and round three to Axel Schultz. Obviously, all three rounds, 10-9 on the 10-point must scoring system. You see the redness on Axel's face there. Again, a reminder that you can follow this fight, score it yourself, America Online. Password is ABC Sports. Get on in there and see if you uh, can do better than the three gentlemen at ringside. Big difference is yours doesn't count. Trust, <laughs> trust me. Uh, on the previous two, Axel Schultz tries for the yeah. title. Anybody flipping a coin could have been better. Now Michael, for the first time, leaning on the ropes and spins off him well. But for a moment there, that was Michael. It might be a sign that he's a little bit tired here around seven. Might be looking for a second win. 
Oh. Axel Schultz not letting his hands go now, fighting in no. spurts, trying to steal rounds at the end, trying to steal rounds by flirting in the final 30 seconds. And you know, you know a guy's been spending too much time on the ropes when the back of his his shoulder blades are showing the abrasions of rubbing up against the ropes. Axel Schultz is back uh, a little red and raw. Oh, a good response to that cuffing jab by a right hand by, by Moore. And you saw the quickness from Michael Moore. Yep. It's just amazing for a guy who came up from 175 up now to 220. Two for this fight, Dan. To see the quickness he brought with him, he does have good reflexes. Good quickness. He did not bring as much punching power, and, and that is something of a mystery. Maybe just be he's hitting bigger guys. It may also be that he doesn't, because of the problems he's had getting hit by heavyweights and the number of times he's been down, he just doesn't want to commit to the power. He doesn't want to take the chances of getting hit back when he does load up punches. This fight for the belt that was once owned by Michael Moore, he won it by beating Evander Holyfield. He lost it by getting knocked out by George Foreman in a fight that he was winning handily. And then you hear the crowd, they said Michael Moore is reported out early in this round, is tired. He has taken a couple of big punches here. This may be at the beginning of a downhill run. It may just be him waiting for a second win. But he has been tired here in round seven. We'll find out. Here's the end of the seventh round. This summer. Eighth round action here in Dortmund, Germany. This crowd into it now as they sense some weakness on the part of Michael Moore. He lost that seventh round, and he looked tired in the second half of that round. And Teddy Atlas, his trainer, was quick to point it out to him, screaming at Michael when he got to his corner. Oh, a good jab by Moore. Saw it snap Schultz's head back. It was not a warm reception waiting Moore in his corner, but Alex, it's almost the same thing every time he heads to the corner. It is. Teddy said to him, you're up by one round. Uh, you never believe when it's a low blow there by Schultz. Nothing from the referee. You never believe, and, and a good punch on the break. Uh, Michael came out not punching, an actual punch. You never listen to a trainer scoring when he tells his fighter. He's trying to motivate his fighter. He's not telling the truth. I don't think Teddy thinks the fight is that close, but I know Teddy's concerned about the performance in the last round. Let's see in this round eight whether that was just a temporary problem or whether Michael really is running out of gas. And if Axel Schultz has enough gas in his tank uh, to, to put the pressure on Michael to, to take it out of him. Right now, both men are looking for a rest. And, and Michael Moore punches, to his credit. He sucks it up and puts the punches together to score the points. Weren't powerful punches, but they were scoring punches. The left hand, the jab of Axel Schultz, is an absolutely absent weapon here in this fight. It is doing nothing to Moore. Moore's jab, on the other hand, has caught Schultz's respect. Both those jabs blocked by Schultz. Wide amateur's right hand did get home by Schultz. And there's the piston-like jab of Michael Moore. You almost think that he could just win the fight with that punch. If he just shot that punch out and made sure he didn't get countered. I think piston-like is an excellent description, Alex. Thank you. Yes. Well, it's, <laughs> it's more than just a punch to score a few points. Oh. It's inflicting some damage on its way. But I'll tell you something. He's got to be careful because if he lays it out like he just did, it doesn't come back or put something behind it. Axel's going to start timing it and land punches at counter punches. And, and there, you see Michael just pawing, looking well, tired here well, in the closing he, seconds of round he, eight. And he took a right hand from Schultz. <laughs> Michael Moore is going to have to dig deep to maintain his dominance in this fight. Inside the final 10 seconds of the eighth round. We'll be back. Referee Bill Connors brings the two fighters out for the beginning of round number nine. Boy, this we, title we, fight scheduled for 12, Alex. Have we not given Bill Connors any call at all, which is a sign of how much these guys have punched? 
Bill Connors, I don't think, I mean, barely no. said his name. The poor guy's doing his first heavyweight no. title fight, and he's got no exposure. I was just trying to give the guy a little bump. He hasn't had to separate these two guys since they started. I'm not sure Bill should collect a check for this. <laughs> well. They didn't need him. I, I, I don't mean to denigrate him. He just has not been needed. No. I'm sure that's the way he'd just as soon have it. <laughs> Teddy Atlas imploring Michael Moore to set the tempo. You be the one to declare the pace. It's what we worked on. Don't allow him to just sneak in and get cheap points. And Teddy said, you know, it's a subtle thing. Teddy That's the cleaned up version. Yeah, Teddy's such a smart guy. He's such a great trainer. He said to Michael, you're, you're using your jab just to keep him off you. You're not using it to hurt him. And, and what he means is that jab right there, that wasn't thrown to do anything. It was done just to keep Schultz from punching. Right. It's not an offensive weapon. It's a defensive weapon. It can be, but he wants him to go out and try to do something offensive with him. That was a snapping right jab. Got to put something with him. No, that one wasn't. That one wasn't. There, oh, was and there he lazily put out the jab and took a right hand as a treat. These that are not piston -like. punches being thrown with <laughs> conviction by Michael Moore. Look they, at them. They they're are just, not piston-like. They're just pawing punches. He's not ripping punches at all. He's not sitting down at all. Right hand there scoring by Schultz. This is a defensive Michael Moore. Axel Schultz showing a little more upper body movement, but still backing himself into a corner. He was in the corner. Michael had him right where he wanted him, and, and he him didn't go. let his hands go. He just let him walk out of the corner without paying a price. Axel Schultz walked out uncontested. Again, another lazy jab by Moore, and he takes the right hand. And the answer here, Dan, has to be one thing. Michael Moore knows how he feels. Michael Moore knows his body. Michael Moore is tired, and he's scared of running out of gas, and he's trying to pace himself, and he's trying to conserve his energy. Can he be thinking, Alex, that maybe I've got this fight won and no. I can coast home? No, I, I don't think so. I hope so. not. Um, not, he can't be, because uh, Michael's not stupid. He knows he's sitting here in front of a hostile crowd and the fans cheering for every one of his opponent's punches and the judges score with their ears as well as their eyes. He has to dominate right now. I just don't think his body is there for him to do it. Although he's sitting in front of judges, one of whom is not from Germany. The end of the night. If you want. Let's get it started here for round number 10, which looks like it may end up being an exciting finish to this fight. Again, scheduled for 12 rounds, the IBF heavyweight title here on ABC's Wide World of Sports, presented by Budweiser. And these rounds have been tough to score these last few rounds. A challenge to our friends on AOL are trying to get holding and hitting by Axel. Crowd reacts. That is illegal. They're reacting to a big right hand of Schultz's, which landed on the shoulder of Michael Moore. Certainly looked a lot better than it really was. No one is in control of this fight right now. And each man is allowing... Oh, good combination. Michael Moore pushes him off. There's Teddy Atlas, Michael Moore's trainer. Everybody remembers Teddy's heroics in the Holyfield fight when he just sat out on the stool in Michael's corner and just urged him on, challenged his competitiveness. There's a good right hand by Schultz over the top. And a good jab back by Moore, scoring points. Moore scoring point. But where there were some rounds early in this fight, Alex, where it just appeared to be domination by, by Moore, we've not seen one of those in four rounds or so. Michael Moore, if you've caught it on the leg of his shorts, you see the, the word Jeff there. That is for a friend of his back in the Catskills who Michael, Michael would only say is not doing well right now, and I think he needs to lift, so I'm going to give him a little pop here from Germany. Punches by Axel Schultz going over the top, raising the arm and sliding over the top. Battle of conditioning. Battle of conditioning. Whoever is in the best condition is going to win this fight. There's about and, and guts. And guts. And heart. About seven minutes of boxing left in this one if it goes a distance. Oh, a good right hand to the body by Axel Schultz. Get! 
Michael. Michael Moore counterpunching, not taking initiative, backing out, letting Schultz step forward and throw the right hand. Not coming forward, not backing Axel Schultz up. See a little movement there by Michael Moore, scoring punches. Needs to sustain it. There was a good jab this by round, Michael. This round may still be up for grabs. Whoever wins this last 10 seconds may win this round. Well, Good there right was a jab. good right hand by Moore. Both fighters finished the 10th strong. We're back for the start of the 11th round. Alex, after listening to uh, Teddy Atlas for 60 seconds, I'm about ready to give him some gloves and let him go in there and fight. He is in Michael Moore's face the entire... 60 seconds. Yeah, good two punches there by Michael. Yeah, but you have to say that it is a different Teddy, a tone, a different tone, I think. I think he knows that Michael is, is in some ways, trying his best. He, he's not thinking he's getting less than a maximum effort from his fighter. He's just trying to lift him up to a better effort. I think he knows Michael's tired. I think he believes he's trying. It may just be that he's in with a guy who's got more guts and more determination. Well, the 11th I should say that. That's not fair. Maybe more stamina. The 11th and the 12th round, certainly very much up for grabs if what we've seen coming in continues. The busier fighter, the busier fighter, there's Lou Duba, who's working the corner along with Teddy Atlas, trying to inspire him as, as Lou does so well. In actual Schultz's corner, we should say that we told you don't believe in trainers telling their fighters scoring. They told actual Schultz it's five rounds to five rounds. The next two rounds will determine it. They may very well be telling the truth. Axel Schultz trained by Manfred, Manfred Volke, the Olympic gold medalist from the 68 Olympics. He was a welterweight champion there, the same Olympics that George Foreman won gold in Mexico City. So he knows a little something about what's happening. Michael is oh. trying. You see him trying there. Oh, good body good shots. combination by Moore. Good work. Best work in several rounds yep. by Michael Moore and nothing back yet from Axel Schultz. He landed seven or eight uncontested punches. Oh, oh good uppercut by Moore. Axel Schultz covers up. Big round so far. We're coming up on one minute to go. A big and perhaps a crucial round for Michael Moore. There's a jab with a little more. It didn't catch anything, but it at least appeared to have a little more on it than the ones he's been throwing previously. Now, let's see if Michael can sustain it. Let's watch Axel Schultz try to steal a round in the closing seconds. That's not the punch that's going to win it for Axel, that, nope. that leading left. And interestingly, he held on in there. He forced to try to tried to clinch. Very good punch and a little bit of movement from Axel. But he's not letting his hands go. And both men clinched there. One of the few times the referees had to separate him. This crowd so anxious for any type of a positive sign from, from Axel Schultz, their German hero. Important win, important round for Michael Moore as he puts a punctuation point with a right uppercut. The end of the 11th. The fighters touch gloves for the beginning of the 12th round. Teddy Atlas late in exiting his corner as both fighters thinking to themselves, maybe the winner of the 12th will win the fight. And they pick it up and they get it going for the beginning. You can see for maybe the steam coming off these two men. It did turn out, Dan, to be a question of stamina and conditioning, and this 12th round could well tell the story. Oh, a couple of good, solid punches by both fighters. I think the best was the left hand by Michael Moore down the pipe. And there are two body punches. Be interesting to see if Michael Moore gets credit for those body punches. He has done all the body punching in this fight. But yet neither one of these fighters to this point, Alex, has landed a punch that has really rocked the other fighter. That's correct. I really thought that by this point in time, Moore would have landed an uppercut that would have damaged Schultz. Those punches all hit on arms and shoulders. The right jab scored there by Michael yep. Moore. 
actual strength thing, you know, as the superior strength to push Michael back. Michael complains to the referee about that and scores two right jabs. And a left. Oh, a good a right. Good work by Michael Moore. Oh, and another good right uppercut by Moore that catches Schultz. Teddy Adler said in the corner before this round, you remember what you did with Holyfield? You remember how you won the title? You won it in the 12th round. Now go out there and win this title, win the 12th. Up to this point, Moore has certainly been getting what he wanted, and that is Schultz coming in, swinging wildly. Leaving himself open for Moore's counterpunch. The heads, the heads flashed there a little bit. No cuts, but I think it temporarily might have stunned Michael a little bit. A gutty performance by both men. They are both dead tired. And they're still trying their hearts out. So much at stake, Dan. Not just the IBF title is at stake here, but the winner of this fight, if he defends his title properly, will meet Mike Tyson in a huge, probably, in a huge payday as Mike Tyson tries to unify the heavyweight title. So much at stake. Frank Bruno got, what, $6 million to fight Tyson? That's the kind of money we're talking about here. Another good combination by Michael Moore. Michael Bloody in the mouth. Doesn't matter much now. Ten seconds left, and they hear it, and they know it, and they're trying to finish big. What a furious finish by both of these fighters. And there's the bell. It'll go to the judges. You got a feeling? Who knows? Anything could happen. We're going to go right now to Robin Roberts in New York. We'll be back for the decision. Now in Michael Buffer for the one, decision. One five to one one three for Schultz. everybody when we return we'll go back to our studios in new york for alex wallow i'm dan deardorff Auf wiedersehen from dortmund